Hey, Flip Geometry, how are we doing? We're jumping into the next lecture here, 7.4 Special Triangles. This is a special lecture. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's be special together. Our first special right triangle is an isosceles right triangle. Because in an isosceles triangle, the two base angles are congruent. Um, if the vertical angle, the vertex angle, is 90 degrees, making it a right triangle, then the two other angles, the base angles, must be 45 each. Um, and so sometimes this is called a 90-45-45 or a 45-45-90 or a, however you want to arrange that. Um, and so it's an isosceles right triangle. We'll be able to do some pretty cool things with it here. The first cool thing we can do with it is predict the length of the hypotenuse pretty easily. If we know the length of one of these sides, and we call that L, then the length of the hypotenuse is L times radical 2. So uh, this comes out of the Pythagorean theorem, right? Because this squared plus this squared equals this squared. Well, if this is something, let's call it L. L squared plus L squared would be 2L squared, right? Um, and so if we then square root that to get what the hypotenuse is, the square root of 2L squared, L can come out because it's squared. So L comes out. And 2 has to stay in the radical, unless you want to get the decimal equivalent of that. So radical 2 times the length of, a, uh, of one of the legs here will give you the length of the hypotenuse. So that becomes very handy. You can figure out the length of the hypotenuse really easy. So let's do an example with that. Find the exact values and decimal approximations for the lengths of AC and AB. AC and A. B. Well, this uh, side is 3, and this is a 45, 45, 90, so that means that it's an isosceles triangle, which means that if this is 3 centimeters, so is this. So AC equals 3. That's easy. And then the hypotenuse of that triangle will need to be radical 2 times 3 centimeters. So it's 3 radical 2 centimeters, and if you wanted to get the decimal equivalent of that, you could. So 3 radical 2, 3 times the square root of 2 is 4.2 approximately. Okay, there you go. You'll do a bunch of things like that. And you can do that exact same thing backwards, where if you have 12 feet here, um, this is the side length times radical 2. So how do you get to the side length from the hypotenuse? Well, you divide by radical 2. So the side length here will be 12 divided by radical 2, 12 over radical 2. Um, and so you can punch that into your calculator and discover that uh, that would be 6 radical 2 feet or uh, about 8.5 feet. All right, let's move on. So the next triangle is the 30-60-90 triangle. And um, in this particular drawing, they're showing you two of them. But the 30-60-90 triangle has a 90-degree angle, a 30-degree angle, and a 60-degree angle. And you will see these all the time. And I, you'll actually see these in the real world quite a bit, even after you're done taking geometry. If you build anything, and you're looking at any kind of forces that you're trying to figure out as you're building something, the 30-60-90 triangle shows up a lot in architecture and a lot of just stuff you're going to build. Um, so it's, it's good to be friends with it. And what they're showing you here in this diagram is that a 30-60-90 degree triangle is what you get if you drop an altitude down an equilateral triangle. Triangle ABC is equilateral. Drop an altitude, it's also a median. And now you've created two 30, 60, 90 degree triangles, okay? Um, what can you do with a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle? Well, if the length of the shorter leg of 30, 60, 90 degree triangle is x, then the length of the longer leg is x times radical 3, and the length of the hypotenuse is 2x. So here we have this triangle. Um, this would be x, this would be 2x, and this would be x times radical 3, okay? The sides of a triangle are always 1 to radical 3 to 2. So if this is 1 foot, this is 2 feet, and this is 1 times radical 3 feet. Okay, just some things that you can remember. So let's do this. Let's find the exact values and decimal approximations for x and z. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is the longer leg. So if this is x, then this is x radical 3. So if this is x radical 3 and that equals 12, I can solve for x. 12 equals x radical 3. I'm going to divide both sides by radical 3, and I'm going to re realize that that's 4 radical 3, which is 6.9 centimeters. This step here is just a simplification of the fraction. It, you can type in in your calculator 12 divided by the square root of 3. You don't have to multiply by radical 3 over radical 3, which is what they're doing here, to get to the radical 3 up in the numerator. And what you wind up doing is 12 radical 3 over radical 3 squared, 
radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. They're skipping those steps in this, and sometimes it's a little confusing. But um, you can just take 12 divided by radical 3, punch into your calculator, and get about 6.9. That's fine. Okay, Don't worry about simplifying the fraction if that's confusing to you. Z then would be twice X. So if this is 6.9, um, this is 4 radical 3. Well, this would be twice 4 radical 3 or 8 radical 3. Um, then that would be 13.9. Okay? If you have questions over that, we'll go through several more examples in class tomorrow. So knowing that we have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle uh, that makes up half of an equilateral, we can take the formula for a triangle, 1 half times base times height, to get the area of that triangle. We can substitute in the letter S for the base of that. And then one half of that base is half of the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. That, that base is, is like one half s. Radical 3 times that is the altitude. So one half times s times radical 3 is the altitude. And then the base is s. And then multiply all that together times one half again for the area formula of a triangle. When you derive all that together, you get this. So I'm saving you all that algebra. The area of an equilateral triangle is radical 3 over 4 times the side length squared. And it doesn't matter which side length you choose because it's an equilateral triangle. Okay, so you'll find the area of a couple of equilateral triangles using this formula. Here we're getting you ready to do some prism geometry, uh, even though you're not quite to that. So you're going to get a preview here. This is a triangular prism. It's a triangle on one side, a triangle on the other, and then all the edges are joined by rectangles. That's what a prism is. Um, you haven't had that definition yet, but there's one. Um, and so a triangular prism, if it's five inches on all sides of the, of the triangle, it's an equilateral triangle, what is the area of each cap of the prism? So the area here and the area here. We can actually call those bases. I don't know why they use the word cap, but anyway. So the five, five is the side length. So five squared is 25 times radical three over four. 25 radical 3 over 4 is 10.8 square inches, okay? And just as a reminder, whenever you're doing area, you're always working in square inches, not linear inches. Make sure that your answers reflect that. Alrighty, so that's it. We'll be playing with uh, special triangles and some area formulas for those. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. Or if you see me first in class, let's address them there. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.